Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. Why should you stay connected with friends, family, or the community? Because your life just may depend on it. Social isolation is not just feeling lonely, it's lacking meaningful contact with others, and it takes a toll on your physical and mental health. Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. I'm your host, Lisa Sather. Today we'll talk about how you can fight the risks of social isolation. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back. On last week's episode of Healthy Living for Life, we talked about the impact isolation and loneliness can have on older adults and their health. We heard from experts about programs that help make sure people don't have to be alone. This week, we're gonna talk about different options so people can fight social isolation risks and reconnect with the community. Joining us this morning is Nancy Anderson from AARP. Nancy, thanks for continuing this important conversation. Absolutely. So isolation among older adults is becoming a public health issue, and we, of course, talked about this last week. To quickly reset the stage, can you explain how feeling isolated or lonely can affect someone's health? Yes, it's amazing to me. People who have limited social contacts actually are 26% 20 per, more likely to um, die from their chronic health conditions than people who have good so social circles and are well connected. And you know, it really has the effect of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It's just amazing. So it can really, um, make your health uh, conditions worsen more quickly. You can be more susceptible to heart disease, breast cancer, high blood pressure, as well as emotional um, diseases like anxiety and depression. So there's some common reasons why people feel cut off from their community. Can we talk about some of those and what people can do to combat them? One of, one of those is lack of transportation. Oh, you've got that right. Once an older adult loses the ability to drive or even can't afford to maintain their vehicle any longer, that can be a real um, red flag and a road to a social isolation. So there's a few things that that person should do. They need to not be afraid to try to connect with neighbors, ask for a ride, call a family friend and ask to go to lunch, um, to get taken for errands, that kind of thing that's really important. Um, you can also check into the bus schedules. Buses are a good way to uh, get around. They're economical, but not really a, a good solution in a rural state like Montana. Um, although cities have some pretty good um, programs, Helena has Dial-A-Ride that you can just call and they'll come pick you up and take you to the place that you want to go. You don't even have to track a, a route that way. But those are great tips. Another common risk factor for isolation is physical fitness. You know, feeling tired or weak or feeling off balance as a lot of folks might, or even a poor body image can obviously keep people from getting out and socializing. What's your advice there? Well, you know, health conditions really affect your ability to get out and connect in the community. So uh, the best idea is to join a health club because you get kind of a twofer for that one. Mm -hmm. You get some social contacts right there, plus the physical exercise to help strengthen your body so that you can be um, more mobile. But that's not available for everyone. <laughs> Senior centers offer exercise classes. There's exercises you can do at home as well. Um, but it's really important to get strong enough to get out into the community. Oftentimes, maybe as they're recovering from a surgery or a health episode, um, it's surprising how quickly that muscle tone goes. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid or embarrassed to use a walker or a cane. Uh, the most important part is to get out and to connect in the community. Another physical condition that can lead to social isolation is hearing or vision loss. Can you speak to that? Boy, isn't that right? Yes. I mean, I just can't imagine being out in a group of people and not being able to mm -hmm. hear the conversation. Maybe you don't hear when someone speaks to you. You can't add properly to the conversation. That's very isolating, even in a large group. So a hearing aid can make a world of difference in somebody's social interaction. And you know, vision is another mm -hmm. thing. As we get older, we often get cataracts. Things get pretty blurry, not as sharp as they are. And getting uh, that taken care of can brighten the world. It brightens your outlook. It makes you better able to drive and get around. So your physical um, health is really important in so many ways. 
How about connecting with people online? Is this is this helpful, or does the social interaction actually have to be face to face? Oh no, uh, technology is wonderful. There are apps now like FaceTime and mm -hmm. Skype where you can actually connect to your loved ones miles away. And Facebook is a great outlet. I lived away from my family for 13 years while my grandkids were little and growing up. But thanks to Facebook, I got to see their first days of school and their Easter baskets and all the wonderful things that really marked their growing years. And so I didn't feel like I was apart from them. Um, it really is fairly easy for older adults to get connected. And it might be a good idea, maybe you could buy a tablet for your loved one, mm -hmm. set it up at home and mail it to them so they're all set to go. All they have to do is turn it on. Great. So for those people who don't have friends or family nearby, what are some community options that might they might be able to tap into to meet new people? Well, it's always good to tap into your senior center. They have meals, they have social activities. Um, another great way to get connected is through volunteering. Um, AARP has a great volunteer program, but so do um, your local museums. And um, you can volunteer at a, a hospital or there's so many different ways. Uh, find your passion, find what you'd like to do, give back to your community and make friends. Absolutely. How about getting a pet? Is that something that might help someone oh, feel yeah. more connected? Oh yeah, a pet is great. You know, uh, we're born to nurture. So the more that we can get a pet and take care of it. Um, however, if you're not up to that, even growing plants in your house or having a garden outside can fulfill that nurturing need. And so that might be a good option as well. Wonderful. So we just have a few seconds left, maybe quickly, and maybe a few sentences talk about caregivers and how they may feel isolated sometimes. Right, if your spouse or your loved one suddenly falls ill, your life becomes, becomes taking care of that person. So it's important for you to connect. AARP has some great caregiving resources at aarp.org slash caregiving. Great, thanks. We're gonna take a quick break. We're going to, as we mentioned, we're going to talk about how volunteering benefits you and those you help out and how to volunteer opportunities no matter where you live. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. A great way to keep yourself active and social is to find ways to volunteer in your community and it's beneficial to you and to those you help. Joining us now is Melanie Bruin from the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, our RSVP. Melanie, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes, so tell me what is RSVP? Well, RSVP is an acronym for Retired Senior Volunteer Program. We're uh, sponsored by the Rocky Mountain Development Council and we're funded through the Corporation for National Community Service, which is a federal agency. We are here to serve our communities through volunteerism with seniors. Excellent. So the program's just for seniors then? It is, it's for folks 55 years and older. Okay. And they need to be able to commit to eight hours a month, which isn't a whole lot, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it is a kind of a minimal figure we ask them to do. And that can be divided into several days, maybe four hours one day and four hours another. Um, but we uh, ask them to commit to that, and 55 years older, that's the only requirements. Excellent. So what are the benefits of getting out into the community and volunteering? Can you talk about that? Well, um, as you've referenced in the program, getting out and being active actually is great for a senior's health. There's studies that indicate there's 24% uh, better chance of being healthy and maintaining your health if you're out amongst other people, if you've got, um, you're uh, looking for things to do, meeting new folks, learning new things. And uh, so it offers a lot of opportunities for seniors to, to improve their own health as well as helping our community. Excellent, what kind of jobs do these seniors volunteer for? Can you talk about some of, some of those that are available? We have a multitude of jobs. We have 13 fixed stations which volunteers go to every day. And these are the type of volunteers that like to be a little more mm -hmm. regimented, so they want to know that every Tuesday and Thursday they're going to a certain place from a certain time. And so we have the Montana Talking Book Library, the Fort Harrison VA Medical Center, 
uh, Helena Food Share. We have a lot of these stationary places where people can go on a regular basis. But then we also have to mm -hmm. accommodate those folks who are eclectic yes. and sort of, you know, are freelancers. Yes. And so we have a group called the Special Forces. Okay. And we deploy them yes. to anywhere in the community that needs help. So that could be perhaps a nonprofit is having a marathon race that they're trying to raise some money uh, to help income challenge kids buy playground equipment, something like that. Then our volunteers would go over and man the roads and handle the traffic and do that type of thing. And then we just have more simpler special events like maybe the Chamber of Commerce needs some help putting together a mailing, something like that. Okay. So they, they really go everywhere and they are, some of them are specially trained for where they want mm -hmm. to be and others are, they're just like, oh, we'll just see what the day brings us. Perfect. So, yeah. Well, it sounds exciting. So if someone is interested in getting involved with RSVP, how do they go about that? It's easy. Just give me a call. We're down at the Jackson Street Center at 648 North Jackson Street. And they can just give me a call and I'll send them an application. They send it back to me or they can drop it off and come by and visit. And then I'll review the application and give them the call for an interview. And then we'll talk about the types of volunteer service they'd be interested in mm -hmm. doing. Maybe they like working with children or pets or they have an interest in garden, community gardens. We try to really work with nonprofits and other organizations that have, we consider a community priority. Yes. And so a lot of times that's working with the elderly, the disabled and handicapped, veterans, um, families that are income challenged, kids that need mentoring, mm -hmm. um, you know, a large variety of things, but things that our community prioritizes as being, you know, the higher need, higher need items. So if a senior isn't in perfect health, you know, can they still volunteer? Can they still help out? Absolutely. Um, in fact, that is the type of senior who should try to engage in some kind of volunteer activity if they can, because it's only going to make them um, more able to get around easier mm -hmm. and that type of things. We have a bus uh, through the Rocky Mountain Development Council that if you do volunteer work, the bus will come and pick you up if you're in the Helena area and take you to your volunteer job and also take you home. So it's very convenient for folks to do that, but about 20% of my volunteers have some kind of a disability. Okay. And, uh, but they're still able to contribute and sometimes their contribution is really more meaningful because they have a deep understanding of disability and of people who have need. Absolutely, so are most of the volunteer stations here in Helena? Uh, I would say 80% of them are, but we do have volunteer stations also scattered throughout uh, Broadwater and Jefferson County, all the way as far south as Whitehall and as far north as Augusta and Lincoln. Awesome. So for those who are watching who may not be in the Tri-County area, uh, RSVP serves, do you have any general tips just in the last couple, uh, last minute or so that we have for folks who would like to volunteer in their community? Yes, I think the most important thing is just to contact some type of an agency, a nonprofit that you have an interest in, mm -hmm. and let them know that you would like to volunteer. Um, they will, they'll bend over backwards usually to accommodate, you know, getting your information and setting up a schedule with you. Try to pick out something that you enjoy. Sure. It doesn't necessarily have to be something you have career experience. Mm -hmm. um, I have several nuclear scientists, oh, literally, wow. that are now doing think, mentoring children. You know, because they don't want to do the same thing they did all their working life. They Absolutely. want to do something different. Sounds like an amazing program. Thank you so much for being here and sharing with us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We need to pause here and take a break, but coming up next, how do you know if you or someone you love is at risk of social isolation, and how can you help? We'll talk about that after these messages. Don't go away. Friends and loved ones are usually the first to notice that someone might be feeling lonely or isolated, but you can also recognize it in yourself. How? 
Nancy Anderson from AARP is back to talk more about that. Nancy, thanks again for your time. Happy to be here. We've learned ways to combat isolation, but how do you know if someone is feeling isolated or lonely? Are there some signs and, and red flags? Yes. Frequently, um, there will be tips and there will be clues. Maybe they start saying things like, I just never get out of here. I'm all by myself. I feel so lonely. Um, you need to really listen to that and pick up on it and pay attention to their habits as well. Um, are they eating? Are they still doing the things that they've always enjoyed doing? Or have they backed away from some of those things? Those are important clues. Do these risk factors always lead to social isolation then? or? Well, they don't always, but they certainly can. Mm -hmm. So it's incumbent on us to reach out to our loved ones um, and to really uh, keep our finger on the pulse of their emotional um, health. I think that's an important issue. That makes sense. If I'm hearing someone make these comments or noticing that, that they're withdrawing or not getting out of their home much, what can I do? Well, you can reach out. You can say, hey, let's go for a drive today or find ways to help them connect. Maybe suggest some technology options. Um, find out if there's something bothering them, if their health is uh, taking a turn for the worse. It's really important to be a friend and to be a loved one and to help support someone who might be going through some difficulties. So depending on what that person says, what would the next steps be? potentially be? Well, you can get them connected to their local senior center. You can suggest that they volunteer, um, have them see their health professional to make sure there isn't something physically going on with them, and um, make some suggestions, reach out to them. So what about if your loved one lives far away, not in within the state you reside, and how can you help that person from a distance? Well, technology is our friend, that's for sure. And um, between uh, FaceTime and Skype, people can uh, tag right into their loved ones and their families and friends far away. Also, Facebook in, and Twitter both are kind of different sorts of social media that help people to stay connected. Um, making phone calls, sending letters, um, talking to maybe a neighbor that you know is a friend, or reaching out even to the loved one's health professional and letting them know that you have some concerns. There's lots of ways that you can kind of help move them out of a, a slump a little bit and get back into the game. What if there's someone out there watching right now, watching this show, who's realizing, you know, this is me. I feel isolated. I feel alone. What can they do? Well, I'm really excited that AARP Foundation has a great website, and it's called Connect to Effect, connecttoeffect.org. And really, it's just full of resources about isolation. There's a self quiz you can take because you might re not recognize it in yourself, mm -hmm. but you go through that quiz and then it will offer tips on how to overcome the challenges that you're facing. There are also real people stories um, where they'll tell about how they became isolated or lonely and what they did to get back into the game. So it's a great resource. It'll talk also talk about you can put in your zip code and find some local resources that would be available to you where you live. That sounds wonderful. We've talked a little bit about the challenges of living in a rural area and trying to maintain social health, but can you provide any advice specifically for these folks? Well, rural areas are really a different animal. Uh, people are fall ap far apart, mm -hmm. uh, distances are big, but technology hopefully can be a friend out there. There are a lot of rural areas in Montana mm -hmm. where the internet isn't strong and they don't have good connection. Um, but stay connected. There's lots of small community things that happen and um, use technology when you can. What about those folks who no longer have friends and family? They've outlived them or they're not in contact with them. How can they go about tapping into a new social circle perhaps? Right, it's time to get back out there. Mm -hmm. um, you need to just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and kinda, it's kinda hard sometimes mm -hmm. and scary, but join a new group, stay in touch with your church or um, find a new church that has a new social circle. Um, volunteer, I've been working with volunteers for a lot of years and it's always amazed me. Um, we'll have singles that come into our group and pretty soon they're best friends and they're going to the movies on together outside of their volunteer <laughs> activities. So um, you really just have to put yourself out there and find
find ways to connect, find things that you're interested in and passionate about, and um, the friendships will come. That's great advice. Are there, are there any other tips or advice you'd like to give to folks out there who are feeling alone or isolated or unsure of what to do next? Well, take a look at the resources on the um, Connect to Effect website. That should help. Think about opportunities in your community. Um, think about your loved ones. And don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. That is terrific. Anything else from your personal experience you'd like to share with us? I know on a you know, previous conversation you mentioned your experiences and maybe just if you could take that home for us and just let us know. Right, you know, I moved away from my mother. She was here in Helena when I moved away and she was in her home and was very lonely. And she really found comfort and social interaction by moving to a retirement community. She had lunch with folks, uh, they played cards, they did puzzles, and it totally turned her outlook around. So I think that's always a good opportunity. That is just great information. Well, I wanna thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. I've learned a lot and I'm sure our guests, our, our viewers have as well. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope to see you next week. Until then, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the YouTube icon. Special thanks to Fire Tower Coffee House and Roasters. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.